Okay, now we'll talk about the behavior of rational functions. And specifically, we'll be using limits to describe the behavior of rational functions, in particular the end behavior and the asymptotes. Now, a rational function, remember, is some function like this, some function where you have a fraction. When you see rational, think ratio. That's the root of the word. It's not the same meaning as the word rational in everyday language. In everyday English, the term rational means reasonable. You might say, Joe's a rational guy. He's not going to do anything crazy. This is a different meaning here. When you see rational, think ratio. So you have one, one polynomial over another. So it might be 3x squared plus 8 over x cubed minus 5. So the, the function itself is a fraction. That's a rational function. Now here's our first example, a simple one. f of x is 3x over x minus 2. And the point here is that a vertical asymptote will occur on the graph of this function at any place where the denominator is 0 and the numerator is not 0. And you can see right here that if you plug in a value of 2 for x, then you have 2 minus 2, you have a 0 denominator, and you don't have a 0 numerator. So you'll have a vertical asymptote at the line x equals 2. Now we can determine the behavior of the graph near x equals 2, and we can express that with limit notation. Now we could graph the function and look at the behavior of the graph near x equals 2, but I want to do this by analyzing the function. We know there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. The question is, does the graph zoom up toward positive infinity or zoom down toward negative infinity? And to do this, we'll imagine plugging in values in for x near x equals 2. So first, let's imagine uh, uh, on the right side of 2. So put in a number for x right here that's just a little bit bigger than 2. So that's going to be a positive number, a little bit larger than 2. So the numerator will be positive and the denominator will be positive. If x is just a little bit bigger than 2, then the denominator is positive. So just to the right of 2, we have a fraction where both the numerator and denominator are positive. And the denominator is going to be really, really tiny. So the value of the fraction will be a really huge number. So to the right of 2, and we can write this by saying the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, it's going to be positive infinity. Because the closer we get to 2, the closer the denominator gets to 0, and the bigger the value of the fraction is as a whole. Similar reasoning can be used to determine the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. If x is just a little bit less than 2, so that's a positive number now. If x is still a positive number, it's just slightly less than 2. The denominator here, though, x minus 2, will be very close to 0, but will be negative. The numerator will still be positive. So the fraction as a whole will be negative, and it will be a, a very negative number what we would think of as a large negative number, a large, a large absolute value. So negative infinity. The closer x gets to 2, the closer this gets to 0, and it's negative, and the fraction as a whole is negative. So that's just a quick review on how we find vertical asymptotes, a simple example. You should have done things similar to that in Algebra 2 and Precalculus. Again, the rule is vertical asymptotes occur whenever we have a, an x value that causes the denominator to become 0 and the numerator is not 0. And as we see here, we can express those asymptotes or we can express the behavior of the function near those asymptotes with limit notation.